Headphone highlights. Hello and welcome back. And we are talking again about gaming headsets. I'm not going to say that we are ending it, that this is the close off for our discussion of gaming headsets, because, hey, we're going to find more down the road. They're going to end up getting into this house and I'm going to have to talk about them eventually. But we have kind of hit a, a, a certain plateau, at least for now. We've been look, talking about some pretty cool, pretty great gaming headsets lately. And now we're about to kind of once again, hit a kind of new level of gaming headset performance. We're talking about these. If you're at all familiar and in an audio community, you look at these and you go, oh yes, of course, of course, he was gonna talk about these eventually. These are the Sennheiser Plus Drop PC38Xs. There you go, Sennheiser, yes. This is a Sennheiser gaming headset in collaboration with Drop once again. Uh, they they, they kind of took their PC37X 30, line and they upgraded it. That's what this is. Nice little accents and color in here. Black with a bit of yellow in there. It's kind of like a bumblebee. It's pretty cool. 38Xs. We're finally talking about them. I'm very excited. This is a headset that is pretty well known to audiophiles. It is the go-to headset, gaming headset specifically for audio files, for a very good reason, and we're going to get to that. But first, as we always got to do, we talk about the build. This is built very similarly to a lot of Sennheiser's kind of 500, 500, even somewhat 600 line of headphones, mainly stuff like the Jubilees and stuff like these, the five 98s. You've probably seen these before. Lots of, you know, YouTubers and folks have these. So it's in that same line. So it's a, it's a build that's pretty familiar. It is all plastic. It has a nice adjustable, very clicky adjusting mechanism. I'll bring it up close for you to take a look. There you go. All plastic. Everything's plastic. It's very good plastic. It's a matte finish. You're not getting fingerprints all over the place. It looks very, very nice and clean. I've had this headset for a good long while, and the, I mean, you barely see any wear and tear on it at all, if anything. But nice plastic. You have, of course, the, these yellow accents on the microphone and on the cup. This is an open back headphone, which is unique for gaming headsets. Keep that in mind. An open back headphone. You don't see that hardly ever with gaming headsets. But the, the back of it here, this yellow section underneath this metal grill is kind of just a yellow cloth. And then up here on the microphone where it is also yellow, that is just sort of uh, a yellow metal mesh that covers with the microphone. We have the Sennheiser logo right there on the yoke and the yoke is very basic and functional. It lets you kind of swivel up and down this way and you get a little bit of movement also front and back. So plenty of movement for ear comfort. The head strap is plastic, going up into plastic, going up into this headband. The headband is also Hard plastic with the, again, Sennheiser logo right there on the side. The underside of the headband has two comfort pads. They're just very simple cloth covered memory foam, not, not memory foam, but medium dense foam pads that give you a little bit of cushioning and comfort on top of the headband there. The pads, you actually get two sets of pads with this headset. You get this set of pads. It's kind of a fabric uh, almost jersey texture kind of cloth pad. So it's cool to the touch. It's a little bit of a hybrid pad because while the surface of the pad, while the surface of the pad is this nice jersey t-shirt kind of feel, the inside of the pad is a little bit velour. So that's kind of nice. But like I said, you get two sets of pads, this set and then the other set, which unfortunately I don't know where it is. I don't have it anymore. It's somewhere in the house, I don't know. But the other set of pads it comes with are the basic Sennheiser velour pads. It's exactly the same. Whatever, you know, the same kind of velour pad you get in your general kind of Sennheiser headphone, you also get as a backup set of pads for the 38X. So it's just a nice velour with a fairly decent dense foam. It's nice. So two pairs of pads, very good. The microphone is once again a hinge microphone that does have an actuation point that turns it on and off. When the microphone is up, it is off. 
as you pull it down, you hear a click. There's your actuation point. Now the microphone is on and where it positions itself is almost always very naturally like right in the perfect optimal position for your mouth. It's not in my line of sight hardly at all. And even when it's up, it's totally out of my way. I don't see it. It's n not a nuisance at all. Good positioning on the mic. It does have some rubberizing right here. So you can bend it around if you really need to. If you want to put it in your mouth, don't do that. But you could. So good flexible mic. And the mic quality is quite nice. It is actually, I would say it's actually almost identical to the mic quality we got from the H6 Pros. For those of you watching on YouTube, here's what the microphone sounds like. This is what the microphone sounds like for the Drop Plus Sennheiser PC38X. Yep, good mic. Good, decent mic. Sounds great, uh, especially for a you know gaming headset. Hard, Kind of hard to beat. It still doesn't sound as good as those Cooler Master uh, headset. That microphone is absolutely insane, but still a very, very good microphone. Uh, it's a very, very light headset. Because of all this plastic, it weighs very, very little. It's it's hardly any sort of weight discomfort at all when it's on my head. Weight is not really a factor at all. Like having pressure on top of your head, no. But we'll talk more about that when we get to comfort. It comes with a couple sets of cables. You get what I'm currently using, which is just a simple two and a half millimeter entry point there which we've seen with a lot of the Epos headsets. It's the exact same sort of cable. It's kind of elongated and narrow and it has this a little bit of a lip right here for whatever reason. It's not a locking mechanism, but it is, as you can see, fairly long. And that is because of course, obnoxiously the entry point here for the cable is really well inserted into the cup design. So it kind of goes that deep into the headset. So what that unfortunately means is that you can't just listen to these with any two and a half millimeter cable, third party cable, whatever off Amazon or whatever else. It has to be a, a two and a half millimeter cable that is thin enough, narrow enough and long enough to get in here. So keep that in mind. The basic cable that I'm using is a nice length. It's about, actually it's actually, Kind of short, if I'm being honest. I wish it was a little bit longer. That's probably something you never heard me say before. Yeah, I wish this cable was just a little bit longer. It's a good maybe four feet, like three and a half feet maybe. I don't really know. But it's a little short, but it does get the job done. And if you are listening to this headset from, say, your controller, it's plenty. You know, this will just pop right into your controller and you'll be fine. The other end, by the way, terminates to a right angle, three and a half millimeter. That is a four pole so that you can plug this into your head, your uh, console gaming controller and do your listening and your microphone that way. But if you can't use this kind of cable and you need to have the signal split to have your headphone and your microphone, it does also come with one of those. It's a significantly longer cable, but it does terminate splitting your signals, so you got your headphone and your microphone on individual splits there that are color coded and also, although the camera can't really pick it up, uh, image coded. I believe, yeah, the green one has a little image of a headset on it and the pink one has a little image of a microphone on it. So it splits them and it's a lot longer so you can get a bit of distance from your source. So thank you for including that extra, ca that extra cable. That's nice, cool. So good accessories, extra cable, extra pads. It's built very, very well. Very good build, very light. It's not maybe the most premium feeling. It's very well built. It feels sturdy and robust, but it's not the most premium feeling thing. I would argue that the H6 Pros are a bit of a more premium feel. They just feel a lot more, I don't know, not necessarily better built, but have better materials used for them. So they feel premium. They maybe have a bit more of a premium look to them, but make no mistake, the 38 X's are built remarkably well. Comfort. You're going to be plagued with the typical Sennheiser problems, primarily clamp force. We've discussed this kind of ad nauseum, but yes, these also suffer from the same 
clamp force issues that other Sennheisers do, that uh, the, the EPOS headsets that we've talked about have had lots and lots of clamp force. And they are an oval shape pad and ear cup. So you are getting a little bit of it kind of reaching down into your jawline. It's not great. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Fortunately, like I said, it's so light that the top of the headband, I barely notice at all. I don't even really feel it with, with or without the beanie. And uh, the padding up here is perfectly substantial. I don't feel any pressure points at the top of my head at all. Now, the clamp force, fortunately, is a lot more evenly distributed than it is on those EPOS headsets, on the H6 Pro and the H3X. So rather than it kind of forcing the majority of that pressure right down at the bottom of the pad, right where your jawline is, it's a lot better distributed. It's kind of perfect, almost perfectly right dead center against the side of your head here. So the distribution's a lot better, but it's still a lot. It's a lot of clamp force. And once again, the solution to deal with it is to stretch these out. Now, similarly with the H6 Pros, I would not recommend bending the headband itself because this is not a metal headband. This is plastic. It's not going to bend and give the same way that it does with the H3X. It's going to potentially break if you're not careful with it. So instead, I suggest you put this over something and let it just rest. You know, put it over a box, put even the box it came with. And that'll be fine. I'll use this headphone carrying case as a to kind of prove my point here. But yeah, you just put it over something like this, stretch it out naturally, leave it like this overnight or, you know, over a week if you really want to be crazy about it. And it'll really help get rid of that clamp force. Now, you do want to have some clamp force. You don't want to get rid of all of it because one, it ensures that the headphone stays on your head, but also it ensures that you are getting the most sound performance because the more clamped onto your ears those cups are the closer your ears are getting to those drivers and therefore getting the intended tuning of this headphone headset sorry uh we will break it down once again <laughs> the comfort how it is out of the box versus how it is after you've had of you've had some time to stretch it out out of the box it's not as bad as the h3x or the h6 pros i gave those like a four clouds of comfort right out of the box because man did those hurt these are a lot better but still not superb i'm going to give these out of the box a five and a half clouds of comfort they're substantially better than those epos headsets but they're more on par with kind of like the 6xx kind of comfort but after you've had some time to stretch them out, seven, seven clouds of comfort. Very usable, very good, good stuff, good comfort. The sound, okay, gamers, pay attention. All you gamers watching right now, all of you, gamers, hello, how you doing? I'm a gamer too. This is important. This is the best sounding headset. My, my monitor couldn't handle that information, just turned off and turned back on. This is the best sounding headset. Yep, crazy, you're a gamer, here you go. The best sounding headset. The best one. Every headset we've heard. Even the ones that are wonderful and great. The Cooler Masters are awesome. The H3Xs are awesome. Best, this is the best. These are the best ones. The best gaming headset in terms of sound performance. Bar none. I have yet to hear anything come close to these in terms of gaming headsets. And there's a very good reason for that. Because this headset is based on the 500 series line of headphones. That's a really big deal. I don't think it's exactly the same driver, but it's extremely close when it comes to tuning. This sounds like just a straight up genuine Sennheiser headphone. It doesn't sound like a gaming headset. It's not overly bloated with bass. It's not overly tinny and chimey with uh, treble detail. 
it's a headphone, a Sennheiser headphone, and with a microphone on it, specifically with the H6 Pro microphone on it. A great microphone on a great sounding Sennheiser headphone. This has to be recognized. The best sounding gaming headset just sounds like a freaking headphone. We saw this coming. All the headsets that I have praised the most have sounded the most like just basic headphones. But this takes the cake. This 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 takes it all the way to just sounding straight up like a, a regular freaking headphone. Wonderful, amazing sound out of these head this this headset here. It still got a good, punchy, enjoyable low end. Understand that. You're still getting good low end out of this. It's still fun. Explosions and artillery sound immersive. But it's controlled. It's a controlled low end. It's not bleeding everywhere and rumbling everywhere and getting obnoxious and noisy and covering up your detail. It's a precise, quick, fast, and well-controlled low end. Mid-range forward, it is right out there in front of you. You're getting all the detail, all the, all the information you could need. Vocals are, have a, such a natural timbre to them. They sound amazing. They sound real. They sound like they're right there. They're clear as day. Your trouble range is very well detailed. It's sparkly. It's brilliant without being sibilant. It's a wonderful amount of treble with a wonderful amount of detail. Soundstage, you got it. You got soundstage. It's not a gigantic amount of soundstage, but it's a very immersive amount. It's like here. Boom, boom. Soundstage. These actually sound like open back headphones as opposed to the H6 Pros, which while I did get the open back version, did not sound like open back headphones. These do. This sounds like an open back because, because they just sound like regular Sennheiser headphones. Imaging is incredible. Imaging is amazing. It is very, very precise. It is 360 degrees all around you, and you can very easily pinpoint and identify where things are coming from. And you feel the sensation when things fly over your head, over your shoulders, when they're behind you. Very precise imaging, coupled with very good soundstage, so it has a very, very immersive feel to it. And this is like, mostly gaming stuff I'm talking about. I'm kind of going backwards with this. The gaming experience on this is wonderful. It is super fun while also very clear and competitive. You're getting the information you need to be competitive, but you're also able to enjoy it because it just sounds so freaking good. But you could also just straight up listen to music with these very competently. And that is because this is basically, here's what this, all right, here we go. What does this sound like? What's the closest comparison I can give this to? These, you have your Jubilees and you have your five nine eights. I'm making a, I can't, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting, I'm getting excited and I'm getting a little like floppy with my presentation skills. You have your Jubilees, you have your five nine eights, okay? Five nine eights were kind of like a nice entry level audio file experience, but they sounded great. These sound really, really quite impressive for what they are. The Jubilees take it up a pretty significant amount. They're up there with, you know, they're com not really competing, but they're a nice side to something like the six XXs. They're nice. They're lovely. They're a lot more fun than the six XXs. They're not as analytical. They're not as high resolution, but they're very, very nice. As are these. These have a bit more whomp and thump in them than the 598s do, but the 598s have very good natural timbre and a nice even sound signature, very neutral sounding. So you're taking these and you're putting the 38X right in the middle. There you go, right smack dab in the middle. That's where, that's where it sits. Uh, somewhere between the three. 
It has a very neutral kind of style signature, but it does have a bit more of a slight warmth in the low end, similar to the Jubilees. It is a lot more higher resolution and detail than you get out of the 598s. Not quite the same amount of resolution that you get out of the Jubilees, but still, this has the performance, the clarity, the natural sound, the Sennheiser sound signature, and the timbre and reliability of just straight, great sounding, very good performing audio of a 500, high, high number 500 series Sennheiser headphone. That's what this is. That's what this sound like. You have a, you know, if there was a, I don't know, a Sennheiser 5999, this would be it. The Sennheiser 5999 with a microphone. Boop like something right before hitting your 600 range kind of situation. Excellent sounding flipping headset. I cannot stress I cannot stress this enough. This is the best sounding gaming headset. It's the one to beat. I have yet to hear anything better. It's incredible. It's amazing. It is expensive. This is this is a $160 headset. That's a lot. Though it one is the exact same price as the H6 Pros. So forget the H6 Pros and just get these if you have that kind of money. But also they go on sale a lot. Um, I often see these for like 120 bucks. And for that, you're getting a hell of a deal. Oh my gosh. Here it is. What's the best sounding gaming headset? The PC38X, right here. And this isn't a new headset. This headset's been out for a number of years and it is still the best sounding headset. Still is. Here we are in 2023 and this is still the best headset I've ever heard. I mean, I can't get much more straight and honest about it. There it is. Gamers, you wanna have the best headset? Here it is. That being said, that being said, I'm going to annoy a lot of you. I'm going to annoy a lot of you right now. I still think, I still think your best solution when it comes to a gaming headset is to not get a gaming headset at all and to instead get some really nice headphones that can accept a microphone. That is the best possible solution for a gaming headset. IMO. Get yourself, get, get yourself some Philips Fidelio X2s and get a freaking boom mic on there. That's going to be extremely hard to beat. If, if, if any gaming headset is going to come anywhere close to beating that kind of scenario, it's going to be these. Absolutely incredible headset. A little pricey, but get them on sale. Uh, there is an all black version of them if you're curious, but I, I actually really like the kind of Bumblebee aesthetic. I think that looks nice. So yeah. There you go, gaming headsets for all you gamers. There's that kind of ball dropped. Um, we're gonna have to kind of compete all other gaming headsets that ever come onto the screen here to that headset. To be clear, I don't expect many gaming headsets to match with that. If they have, if they cost the same amount, they freaking better. But you know, I don't expect a seventy-five dollar headset to sound like those. You never know. There's still a lot more out there to discover, but all I'm saying right here and now is of the gaming headsets that I have heard, and especially of the ones that we have talked about so far here on the headphone highlights, PC38X is the crowned king and the one to beat. So I hope you enjoyed that. Links will be in the description. Go ham with it. You can't go wrong if you can afford it jump in.